Ceremonies will be held across Europe today to mark the 70th anniversary of the liberation of the Nazi concentration camp Bergen-Belsen. And it comes amid concerns over increased levels of anti-Semitism in the UK. Gina Turgill is a survivor of the camp and wants lessons to have come from those horrors. Belsen concentration camp was known to us as a Finnischungslager, finishing camp. There is no escape. I've seen walking skeletons in every sense of the words. I said to myself, I'm not going to die like that. And all of a sudden I heard some noise. We British, we came to liberate you. The British troops were absolutely fantastic. One of those sergeants, his name was Norman. He made up his mind and he first saw me in the hospital that this is the girl you're going to marry. 1945, when I arrived in England, everybody was happy the war came to an end. It was so different. Why can't that be now? Why people are so hate each other? And we're joined now by Karen Pollock from the Holocaust Educational Trust. Welcome to you, uh, Karen. 70 years on from, from that appalling atrocity which we uncovered when we went into that camp, the, the Allied forces. There's a sense there's a rising tide of uh, anti-Semitism all around Europe now. What, what is the reality, do you think? Look, first of all, today is a really significant day. 70 years after the British forces walked into Bergen-Belsen and saw the horror that really, through newsreels, reached the world. Um, it was something people couldn't really believe. And for people like Gina Turgle, who we heard from, today is such a special day because it was the moment she, you know, understood what freedom was. She became free. Um, so when you hear about anti-Semitism today, of course it makes you worry and of course it's, it's, it makes us anxious. Is it the same as then? No, but that doesn't mean that this problem shouldn't be addressed. What, why is it on the rise? I don't think it's for me to say why it's on the rise. I think we should recognise that anti-Semitism is tackled. We have strong cross-party support. The police really do deal with it. But I think we saw the events in France, particularly the uh, Jewish deli, the kosher deli, where people were held hostage. And I think, of course, at home, it makes people get a bit nervous and feel fearful. But, you know, it really is important that today is the day that we remember what happened and we pay tribute not only to those people that survived the Holocaust, but to those brave soldiers who went in there and really did give that lease of life to those survivors. I mean, Gina's example is incredible. How many, how many survivors are there um, still alive? In the UK, we, there was a gathering last year of 500 Holocaust survivors and refugees. It varies to, to what degree in terms of their experiences. Mm. But of course, the number's dwindling. We have about 80 survivors who go around schools in the UK delivering their testimony. Um, it's just the impact is indescribable. You can hear a penny drop when they're speaking in a classroom. But they know and we know they're not going to be here forever. And that's why our work to say what happened but also to warn young people about what can happen when racism, prejudice and anti-Semitism um, goes unchecked. And when the soldiers went into Bergen-Belsen and when they saw those awful scenes and met those people, that opened people's eyes, didn't it, to what Hitler had been doing. I think there's a kind of assumption that we knew what was going on throughout the course of the war, but, but actually, for many people, that was the moment when the full horror was realised. Look, there were reports and there were different you know, sources of information, but I think the moment that those images were on our screens and when Richard Dimbleby did that famous broadcast, it reached thousands of homes. People suddenly understood the magnitude, the depravity of what it was people were talking about when they said, you know, the annihilation, the determination to annihilate a whole people, the Jews. Events are taking place across Europe today to mark 70 years since the liberation of the Belsen concentration camp. One of the survivors of that camp has spoken of her fears of the rise of anti-Semitism following recent attacks on Jewish people. Gargi Patel reports. The horrors of Belsen have stayed with Gina Turgel for the last 70 years. She witnessed the murder and cruelty suffered by up to 70,000 prisoners, mostly Jews. After liberation, Gina married one of the British officers who freed her and was warmly welcomed in England. But after recent attacks, like those in the Charlie Hebdo office in Paris and the Jewish Museum in Brussels, she fears the rise again of anti-Semitism. 
1945, when I arrived in England, people rushing across the road, can I shake your hand? Why can't that be now? Why people are so hate each other? Belsen was the first major Nazi camp to be liberated, exposing the shocking extent of the Holocaust to the world. It was where the celebrated young writer Anne Frank died, and now it's believed a recently discovered mass grave near the site may be where her body lies. As events to mark the liberation take place across Europe, survivors like Gina continue to tell their story, so new generations will know the truth about camps like Belsen. Gargi Patel, Good Morning Britain.